So here's the first lesson on our new unit, which is called combining functions. So throughout this course, we've worked really hard and we learned about different functions. So we talked about polynomial functions, rational functions, trigonometric functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions. And in this, and in this unit, we're going to put it all together. We're going to combine them. And there are different ways to combine them, but in this lesson, we're going to talk about the two ways, which is adding and subtracting, taking the sum of two functions or the difference of two functions. So before we go over the, the big idea, we're just going to look at or review the idea of a function, okay? So we're going to look at it in the, from the perspective of it being a machine. So whenever you see a function like f of x, when you see that in function notation, you can really think of it as a machine. So the name of this machine is f. You put something in, okay, and that's called your input. So the input in this case is x, and it spits something out. Okay, it goes through some sort of processing, it takes your input, it does something. We don't really know what it does, but at this point, we don't really care what it does. We just know it does something, and then it spits out f of x. Okay, so whenever you see a, a function, you really want to think of it in terms of input and output. Input, output. So what if you had two machines, okay? Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to work with two machines at the same time. So... We have f of x, or f, and we have g. But the idea is, regardless of the machine, the idea is the same. You have an input, and you have an output. Input, output. So, without going into the big idea of this of this lesson, what if you can think of this as um, like a like a Coke machine and a Sprite machine? So, if I put a toonie in a Coke machine, I get a, oops. If I put a toonie in a Coke machine, I get a Coke. If I put a toonie in a Sprite machine, I get a Sprite. So what happens when you put a toonie in a Coke machine and a Sprite machine? So if you did that, that essentially what you're doing is you're adding, okay? You're adding the two functions together. So hopefully you can answer this question. If you put a toonie in a Coke machine and a Sprite machine, you'll get a Coke and a Sprite. So let's go over the sum of these two functions. Let's see. We are working with f and g here. f of x is x squared and g of x is 3. So f of x, uh, let's solve for the output values given that these are the inputs. So the inputs range from negative 2 to 2. So 1, 0, 1, 4. And what about g of x? g of x is a as a constant function. So it's actually, uh, no matter what the input is, the output is always going to be three. So now that you know the output of f and g for these input values, you can actually determine the output values for the sum of f and g. So you just take the sum of the output values of f and g um, at those uh, values of x. Okay, so when you're working with the sum of f and g, you can look at f and g individually and then find the sum. Let's try a different pair of functions here. Oh, uh, these three graphs here. So this is f, this is g, and this is h. So you can think of the y coordinates of these points are all obtained by the y coordinates. Uh, or finding the sum of the corresponding y coordinates on f and g. So for example, if I want to find h of 0, I need to, or one way to go about it is finding f of 0 and g of 0, and then adding them together. Okay, so what if we have f of x is x squared and g of x is the root of x minus 2? So, f of x, once again, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, okay, and g of x, ooh, g of negative 2, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, root of negative 4, if we're working with real numbers here, then g of negative 2 is undefined. Okay, what about negative 1? Oh, negative 1 is also undefined. Okay, uh, g of 0, undefined. Oops. 
uh, one undefined. Well, this is not looking very promising. All right, let's try g of two. g of two, two minus two is zero. Root of zero is zero. All right, so what is h of negative two? What is four plus undefined? So hopefully you remember back to what we did with uh, logarithmic expressions and we stated restrictions. So uh, let's just review here. Let's say log of x plus log of x minus four. To state the restriction on, the, on this expression, you need to make sure that both of these logarithmic terms are defined. Okay, so what we did was for this example, we drew two number lines. So we found values where log x is defined and we found values where log of x minus four is defined. Okay, so this or these two number lines is telling us that this logarithmic expression is defined when x is greater than four. So for example, at uh, log, like if I were to evaluate this expression when x is zero, it's undefined because my second expression is, uh, my second term here is undefined and some number plus undefined will not give you a defined value. So with all that said, we're saying h of negative two, undefined, undefined. What do we have here? Zero plus undefined, undefined, and undefined. Four plus zero, I can do that. 4 plus 0 is 4. Okay, so in fact, since we're already here, let's find the, the domain of h of x. Okay, what is the domain of this combined function? I created this function by adding f and g, the sum of f and g. So the domain of f, okay, the domain of f, it's a parabola, right? It's our basic parabola, so the domain is all real numbers. What is the domain of g? The domain of g, okay, this is your square root function that shifted two units to the right. So the domain of g would be, since it shifted two units to the right, x has greater than, or oops, sorry, these are x. x is greater than or equal to two. Okay, so therefore, the you can draw number lines here if you want, like I did for the logarithmic expression, but uh, hopefully you can visualize it. If you can't, I would re highly recommend the number line and then lo look at where the two number lines are both highlighted. But um, it's pretty clear from these two, the domain of f and domain of g, that the domain of the sum of those two functions must be x is greater than or equal to two. So that's how you find the domain of a sum of two functions or difference of two functions. You take, at the, take a look at the domain of the individual functions and find out the common elements. That's just a fancy of saying where the domains overlap. Okay, what's, what's the, what are the common elements? And in this case, the common elements are values of x which are greater than or equal to two. And it makes sense to say common elements because like I said earlier, if one of the functions is undefined, then the sum is also undefined. So you have to look at where both functions, f and g in this case, are defined. All right, let's do some word problems here. Um, SAC is selling t-shirts and raise money. There's a fixed cost of $200 producing the t-shirts and a variable cost of five t-shirts per main. SAC is selling the t-shirts for $8 each. Okay, so we gotta write um, cost function. So let's see, uh, 200 fix and five per shirt. So five per shirt plus a flat 200. Okay, and then uh, the revenue function, you sell each shirt for $8. Okay, they're both pretty straightforward linear functions. So that's something like, uh, that's like grade nine where you have to model the linear relationship. Okay, now uh, for B, they want us to find the profit function. Perfect. So this is an application of why you would subtract two functions, why you would want to find the difference of two functions because the profit function could be found 
using the revenue and the, the cost function, the difference between the, the revenue and cost function. So P of N is equal to 8N, the revenue, subtracted by the cost. Now be careful, put um, brackets around uh, 5N plus 200. Without the brackets, you're not subtracting by uh, the entire cost function. Okay, the cost function in this case is binomial, so you need to put brackets. So that becomes 3n minus 200. Okay, and then under what conditions will SAC earn a profit? So essentially, we have to ask ourselves, how many t-shirts must they sell? So now we're looking at an inequality, and luckily this is a linear inequality. I'm trying to look for the profit, and when is it greater than zero? Okay, so I'm solving a linear inequality here. Okay, 3n is greater than 200. Divide both sides by 3. n is greater than 200 over 3. So if we take a look at our calculator here, 200 over 3 is 66 and 2 thirds. Well, I can't sell 66 and 2 thirds of a t-shirt. So the, now we have to analyze and say, okay, should we sell 66 shirts or 67 shirts? 66 or 67? So hopefully you'll say 67. Because if you chose 66, and you're not rounding up because of the, the 0.6 or 0.7, you are rounding up because you need to earn a profit, okay? 66 will actually result in, um, in a loss, okay? You can check that out because this is a profit function, right? So if I sell 66 shirts, so it's 3 times 66 minus 200, which is a loss of $2. So if you want to earn a profit, you have to at least sell 67 t-shirts. So under what conditions will uh, SAC earn a profit? Therefore, SAC will earn a profit if they, oops, if they sell 67 or more t-shirts. Okay, good luck to them. Hopefully they sell more than 67. All right, a hot dog vendor has fixed cost of $120 per day to operate, plus a variable cost of 50 cents per hot dog sold. Um, he earns $2.50 per hot dog sold in revenue. The maximum number of hot dogs that he can sell in a day is 250. Write an equation to represent cost, revenue, and profit. So let's do cost first, C of N, uh, so 50 cents a hot dog plus a flat 120 for the day. Okay, that, that's the fixed cost. The revenue is pretty simple. He sells a hot dog for $2.50. Now the profit is a difference. So 2.5n minus 0.5n plus 120, which is... 2n minus 120. Okay, what is the maximum cost per day? Well, the maximum cost per day to operate would actually be the best case scenario because he's going to sell all 250 hot dogs. If he sells the most number of hot dogs, that will actually maximize the cost because it will maximize his variable cost. So the maximum cost would be C of 250. And same with the maximum revenue. Well, that makes sense. The maximum revenue is R of 250. And P of 250 would be the maximum profit. So I'm just write down, I'll do the calculations in a second. R of 250 equals 2.5 times 250. Okay, P of 250. Let's just uh, crunch it out to the calculator just in case. Yep, that's what I thought. 245. So the maximum cost is 245. The good news is that the maximum revenue is 625. So I actually don't need to punch in P of 250 because I have the, the cost and the revenue at uh, 250 hot dogs sold. So I can just find the difference there and then tell you what the profit is. So if the revenue is 625 and the cost is 245, 
then the profit is $380. So the best case scenario for uh, the profit is $380 a day. I'm just thinking, is that, a, is that good? Uh, it depends on how many hours this person was working to sell hot dogs, but um, yeah, 380 is not bad. Uh, but saying that, that's that's a best case scenario. Okay, so state the practical range and domain for each function. So the domain for all three is actually the same, because domain for all three, regardless of cost, revenue, and profit, is the number of hot dogs um, that they're selling. So zero, one, two, all the way up to two hundred fifty. So if you're wondering why am I not writing any uh, real number from 0 to 250 is because I can't sell half a hot dog. I think I can't sell a quarter of a hot dog. No one's going to want that. Okay. So it's not any real number from 0 to 250. Now there's an alternative to way to say, write this. You can say any integer from 0 to 250. So if you don't like this is called roster notation where just list out values. So you can say n is a uh, value such that it's any integer from 0 to 50 where n is an integer. Or you can say whole number like that. Okay, so I think it's easier just to do roster notation, just list it out, uh, but it's up to you. Okay, so what about the cost? The cost function, the minimum value for the cost uh, would be actually the worst case scenario. The minimum cost would be is, is if I sold no hot dogs. Okay, the minimum cost is $120. And for every additional hot dog, the cost increases by 50 cents. Okay, up to a maximum of, we solved for it earlier, 245. What about revenue function? The revenue function, uh, if I don't sell any hot dogs, the minimum revenue is zero. If I don't sell any hot dogs, I don't make any money. In fact, you'll see that it's actually you lose money. But in terms of revenue, it's zero. And luckily, for every additional hot dog you sell, your revenue increases by two and a half dollars. Up to a maximum of a whopping $625. Okay. So now the profit, this is the scary part. If you don't end up selling any hot dogs that day, you have lost $120. Okay, so that's the risk you take when you're, you're opening up a business. You're running a risk of losing quite a bit of money. Okay, so negative 120. But the good news is every additional hot dog, you are making a profit of $2. And the best case scenario, which is something we solved for earlier, is $380. Okay, so this lesson is just um, pretty straightforward, hopefully. It goes over the idea of how to add and subtract, or find the sum or difference of two functions. And we talked about um, finding the domain of this combined function and uh, some application questions uh, as to why you would subtract two functions, for example. And uh, the example we did here is um, the difference of the two functions actually very, very useful. It's the profit function. Okay, so in the next video, we'll take up the homework on um, the sum and difference of functions.